All right, everybody. Uh, Y'all know who it is, Metro Meta and... At One Marcus Flowers. And uh, we'd like to thank you for watching and listening to our content. Uh, we'd like to thank you even more if you, you know, leave a like, a comment. Subscribe, definitely subscribe. We need that subscribe, subscription, subscription, subscription. <laughs> hey, don't forget to share with all your friends and uh, tell us how you feel. And tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that you got it from 26 and Glencoe Media Network. Keep it real. Scoot up, come on. Yo, 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 yo. Hey, welcome back, welcome back. We are here for Volume 4, Episode 32 of the Super Flow Bros Podcast. I am your co-host, Marcus Flowers, a.k.a. Flo, a.k.a. Call Me What You Want, Just Don't Call Me Lazy, and I am joined by... Y'all know who it is, he who shall not be named, he who will rise above Metro Meta, and it's good to be here, Marcus. Right, so uh, how's your week been so far? Uh, pretty good, pretty relaxed, you know. Uh, finally have a job now, so I'm old. Got called into jury duty, so I'm extra old, you know. <laughs> Twice in a couple of years, but uh, we're not counting. Yeah, we're not counting. Are you looking forward to the long weekend? Uh, it should be nice. Uh, got some things planned. Maybe clean up around the house, get some games done. You know what it? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. What? <laughs> Nothing. I'm waiting on you. That was it. That was my thing. <laughs> okay. Uh. Well, it's been pretty exciting for me. Uh. One of the things I was just completely not prepared for was actually working remote and being alone. And <laughs> that's actually uh. We've been doing this for slow. months, though. It's pretty no, but like there's been people in the house with me, but now that it's like no people, it's like oh, <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> By myself. Waking up at the computer, talking to people through a screen. Imagine people who didn't have a whole family in their house with them this whole time. Oh, I could not even imagine. That actually, it actually, now that I've done it, it sounds pretty terrible. Like, I don't want to say you need human interaction, but you just need, like, you know, you just need to feel people's energy around you. Like, you know, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. well, we're going to talk about energy more later today. But uh, shout outs to all of you guys. Uh, August was our best month on record ever. Yes, it was. Like it was. 574 downloads. Right. Uh, and we didn't even put out anything. So you we know what? We actually did put out something. <laughs> we put out so. one podcast. So, yes. So shout outs to you guys for standing 26 and Glencoe even when we're not. Yeah, that just uh, goes to show that we're really trying to build something here. And hopefully in this third year of production, we are going to be uh, more consistent. That's one of the goals. That's actually one of my plans for September and just the future in general, just to be more consistent with the podcast and to make sure that we're giving you all just a variety of content when it comes like getting more uh, video, more uh, streaming, just more type of small clips, more audiograms, more just like short content type pieces. If you follow us on social media at 26 and Glencoe, you may have noticed that we've had we had um, two audiograms go out go out last week. So um, yeah, we're just going to hopefully we're going to uh, well we are going to continue that wave. So um, but yeah, no, let's uh, let's just jump right in. Um, first off, we want to start off sending our prayers and condolences to uh, Chadwick Bozeman who passed away at the age of 43 from colon cancer. Um, it was very, uh, it was very sudden. It was, uh, I just, I remember where I was. I was like laying down and just looking at my phone and like, yo, uh, and actually it was crazy cause I saw it on Facebook first and I didn't believe it <laughs> cause it was Facebook and I was like, hold up. I gotta, I gotta see it from the real social media network site. So I went to Twitter <laughs> And then, sure enough, it was like, the AP News was like, Chadwick Boseman, Black Panther actor, died dead at 43 from uh, colon cancer. Uh, but yeah, we just want to send our prayers and condolences to the Boseman family. And um, one of the things I will say about uh, just Chadwick Boseman is how he seemed like, even though he did portray figures who were larger than life, he didn't necessarily... Uh, come up here like he was larger than life hmm. yeah uh for me it was just 
it's strange watching people like grieve on social media. It always is strange. It was even stranger just the context that this put everything in, just thinking about how important like just that Black Panther movie was for many people. Well, Others, not, not so much. No, not We're even, not naming names. Well, not but. even uh, Black Panther, but like what he did on 42 and the Get On Up, the the, uh, the James Brown movie and um, the Thurgood Marshall uh, biopic that he did. And it really just goes to show like you never, you never know how much time on earth that you have. So you have to give it your all and that seem and that seems like what he uh what Bozeman did every day of his life. Yeah. And that really just like not I don't want to say motivated me, but just like made me feel inspired just because like he was dealing with colon cancer while he was being Black Panther. Like, come on. Like that's quite that's quite the task already. And um of course with like scheduling and like shooting and long days, it's like he put all of that work forward while he was suffering on the inside and still put a smile on his face. And one of the things that um, I didn't necessarily think about until uh, after his passing was um, how on social media, how just how cruel some people can be. Mm-hmm. Just like, do you remember a few months ago when he posted that um, it was a photo and he was looking skinny and everybody was like, oh, he's losing weight. He's losing weight. Oh, it's just saying all types of like rude stuff, and it's like, and he had, and he like deleted the picture, and it's just like, cause we don't know what anybody's going through just through social media, yeah, unless they explicitly tell us, and then even then we don't know the extent of what they're going through. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm mostly in like anime, video game Twitter, but I get glimpses of what Black Twitter looks like, and it. Quite frankly, it gets on my nerves most of the time I see it. And so I just feel like that, in general, is just something that is incredibly looked upon whenever you talk about, like, celebrities. It's just, oh, this didn't look perfect. Now we're going to clown on you. Yeah, and it's, like, um, it, it's kind of tough because it was sudden, but uh, it wasn't sudden to the people who were around him. Like, it wasn't... If his, like, one of the people... I forgot who said it, but, like, get you a circle like Chadwick Boseman because nobody knew outside of his circle that he was suffering from colon cancer. Even uh, Ryan Coogler, the director of Black Panther, didn't know he was suffering from colon cancer. And even uh, Michael B. Jordan didn't know it either. So it's just, like, um, to have that type of uh, solid friendship group to that when you're suffering and they know and they... Uh, know enough to not uh, let it out to everybody. That's a testament on its own way as well. Especially for him to be the caliber of a superstar that he was. Definitely. Definitely. Just keeping it. Yeah, but any last thoughts on uh, on Chadwick Boseman and his life and his legacy and what it meant to you? I mean, he will be missed. Sorely be missed. Right. I mean... I don't even know where you go from there. Right. After that. Uh, one of the things that really was annoying was uh, he passed away on a Friday. Or we knew about it on Friday. And then on Saturday, there was a website that had uh, like how, who to replace Chadwick Boseman with. And it yeah. just came off like really insensitive just because like he's not even in the ground yet. And here you are just talking about... Um, his replacements and some people were trying to justify like capitalism and it's like that's not how it goes that's not how it's supposed to be and honestly i don't even know if there is a replacement that see uh that's my next question do you think there could be another black panther i mean i think eventually there will be another black panther i think the ways that they could go about it first right off the bat my first guess is just give it to the sister, right? Because that's what's ha- that that actually happened in the comics. And I would just say you go with the sister, and that would be a good, that would be a good medium, right? Another thing I think I could think about them doing is maybe like wrapping the story of a uh, looking for a new king, and like there was that yeah. whole like plot line of like Wakanda left America behind, and so maybe looking for a king outside of Wakanda 
from like maybe uh, America or African American, someone of what kind of descent. But that also um, that that goes into the uh, the stereotype that Africa needs America in order to be successful. When it when clearly Wakanda didn't need uh, the United I'm not States. Saying it was the other way around. Not to get a king to be successful, but to get a king to bridge the gap, like right. an Aquaman ass right aspect, where it's like this is the king for us. This is a time for us to reach out and say. Okay, now we need, like, now we need someone who can stand on both sides. Well, there actually, um, there was a series, I think it was by um, Christopher Priest in the late 90s. It was Black Panther, but it was it was when he, I don't want to say he denounced his throne, but he took a sabbatical. And during that sabbatical, he went to New York to uh, fight crime as a common man. And it was like a it was like a fifty to sixty issue run, but um, that that's something that maybe uh, Sherry could do, and just be just bridge that gap, just because the influence of Chadwick on the Black Panther franchise, uh, it will be missed, and his just presence and his energy will be missed, and you'll be able to uh, see it on the script, or see it on the film. So, uh, just you, but of course you just have to move forward. Yeah. I definitely think we need a Black Panther video game now. I want that. Uh, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't go that far. He's in the Avengers game. so Yeah, but that game's trash. No, it's not. It is. Uh, but next up, uh, so uh, we spoke about Black Panther and, of course, movies. But um, theaters are opening up. So uh, Anybody lining up to see Tenet? You know, uh, Tenet does look good, but it's not good enough for me to waste my life on. And actually, um, Adam Tickets, they are, they did a, um, they did a cool, I don't want to call it cool, but they did a cool thing. It's like a Snap Mini app. And so what, and so, scroll down real quick. Yeah. And so, uh, California-based Adam Tickets, the ticketing and concessions buying app. Spine launches branded ticket buying experience inside Snapchat. The new movie tickets by Adam joins a slew of mini apps released by companies like Headscape, which are using Snap's new mini app distri- distribution platform to offer services directly inside the Snapchat app. Adam tickets have planned to launch earlier in the summer, but its plans were put on hold by the pandemic and due shutdown of movie theaters across the country. Uh, with theaters reopening and new titles like Tenet, Bill and Bill and Ted face the music Wonder Woman. Oh, and New Mutants all coming to the silver screen. The time might be New right. New Mutants. Too. Uh, so yeah, it's basically um, so yeah, it's basically a service through uh Adam Tickets, and I actually do like Adam Tickets just because um, in in Denver they do a lot of like indie showings. Like they they mm-hmm. showed um, before the new Brawly uh DBZ Brawly movie, they showed the original Brawly movie. And they showed the um, the My Hero Academia movie. Uh, so yeah, no, I think I think this is great. This is a great aspect to have, especially through Snapchat. And, and say what you want, Snapchat is nowhere near dead. Like a lot of people may not use it, but it is alive and well. You just don't use it. So, I mean, it's big on an iPhone. I hear on Android, it's basically murdered. Uh, what's the last movie you saw? Uh, the last movie I saw, uh, in theaters or just in general? In theaters. The last movie I saw, uh, in theaters was on Valentine's Day weekend, and it was the, uh, Issa Rae and Lakeith, uh, movie. Uh, what was the name of that? Look, uh, look, Issa Rae and Lakeith. I forgot what that movie was called. Um, but yeah, no, it was actually uh, pretty good. And if that, um, and if that was the last movie I would be able to see in theaters, I actually would be okay with that. Like that, it was actually a pretty uh, cool movie. Uh, the photograph, yes. So that was actually a pretty chill and enjoyable movie. I liked it. What about you? My Hero Academia is one justice. So that was like. January? No. That was after Birds of Prey, wasn't it? Okay, yeah, no. So that was February. Wait, was it? 
Let me look up. When did... It's cool. It's cool. We don't have to look it up. But, um... But, yeah, no. I, I'm just really glad that my last, um... Movie theater experience wasn't a bad one. And, it's, and it was actually crazy to, um... To think about, like, Black Panther. And I was like... Because who... What did you see? Who did you first see Black Panther with? Myself. Yeah, so I saw Black Panther twice, and I went with the woman who I don't talk to now, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I can't believe I saw Black Panther with her. Well, I can, but it's like, ah, oh, man. But, uh, but yeah, no, nah, I'm just, um, in this post-pandemic, uh, do you think you'll ever go back to the movies? Maybe. I, I don't better. I don't think I'll especially with uh Mulan and then paying and then like you pay thirty dollars for it. I'm not paying thirty dollars for Mulan. See, you say that, but my friend my friend has a Disney Plus login, so when I get that, you'll get that. <laughs> and then we'll all be able to watch Mulan <laughs> because that's the only way I'm going to see it because my friend, um, he was like, yeah, my brother has Disney plus and they already bought the, uh, Mulan package. And I was like, okay, that's what's up. Can you pass me that login? He said, of course, man. He said, say less. So <laughs> Friday, when that Mulan comes out, I'm going to be there too, watching it. And, but I also think just with the theater experience, like, it's not necessarily needed anymore just because of where uh, home technology is. Just because, like, we have, like, the speakers and we have, like, the 3D TVs. Why would you waste your time driving in somewhere, sitting on sticky seats, and then um, and then watching a movie where the sound might be distorted or stuff like that? I definitely think this is at least going to force them to make overall theater experience is more premium. Yeah. So, when you say premium, what do you mean by that? I mean, like, always making sure the audio is working. Like, me and you, our main uh, movie theater that we go to, at least in Denver, is like Harkins. Well, I actually go to the Pavilions more. but yeah. Now. But, yeah. like, for so long, we went to Harkins. And Harkins, it's not a bad movie theater, but, but it's, it's like mid. Best. It's yeah. mid. Yeah. And I feel like those are the movie theaters that are going to struggle the most. Because, like, why would I pay... Like, it's only like seven dollars at Harkins, but why would I pay that when I could just wait for it to go on streaming for free? Yeah, as opposed to going down to the Pavilion, where there's like drinks and there's nice seats and the audio is always good. Right. But yeah, it's just uh, something to look out for. All right. Um. Brandy versus Monica. Yes, uh, so this was just uh, super dope. Morgan, I know you probably didn't watch it. Nope. Uh, Brandy vs. Monica, uh, do you, are you familiar with the Versus series? Yes. With the Swiss Beats at Timberland? Mm-hmm. So uh, basically they were going back and forth. They played their uh, 20 hits. I had it as a t- 10 hits apiece. I had it as a tie. Um, but it was super funny. I don't know if you saw my uh, Instagram post. And, but it was like, um, when your mama makes you hug the cousin that you hate <laughs> and, and it was like, uh, Brandy all hugging up on Monica and Monica was like, Oh, I don't want to be here. But, um, but yeah, no, I thought it was, it was probably, uh, one of my favorite verses just because, um, they both like, that's, I don't want to say that's the music I grew up to because it wasn't. But uh, it was the music that I was familiar with that I grew up that that really just gave me the appreciation of like good music and vocalist and what song trips are supposed to sound like and what like and what good R and B sounds like. Uh, so um, I mean, I saw this. I saw people talking about this. But yeah, and it, and it, and it amassed uh, one point two viewers, and that was just through Instagram. And uh, that just shows the power of just, like, black culture and uh, just the influence of black women in general who just haven't been getting their flowers, especially during this pandemic. But uh, just those who, just those women who haven't been getting their flowers. So this just goes 
to prove that uh, black women show up and show up and show up and show out and how we should always celebrate them. All right. Oh, but last thing, uh, <laughs> I put this in there. Have you ever, because you're new to the workplace, but have you ever worked on like a group project or something with a person who you weren't necessarily cool with? Nah. So never, like, through all your years of life, you were just cool with everybody in your group project? I just don't talk to people. So how did you do your group project then? Look, I did my part, and then everybody else got left behind. So you were probably the person that they didn't like. You act okay. like I care. I don't. I okay. did my part. I got it done. <laughs> so you, you were know? the person that they did not like. Okay, makes sense. But next up, uh, d- did you uh, see the sports boycott that happened uh, this oh, yeah. earlier this week? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so just if you don't know, it was, um, what was it? It was Monday or Tuesday when um, Jacob Blake was shot in the back seven times by the Kenosha police after he was just trying to break up a, a, a fight. And he was shot in the back seven times. Uh, They took him to the hospital and they handcuffed him to the uh, hospital bed. And to to react to it, the Bucks, the Milwaukee Bucks, and the the Milwaukee Bucks said, we're not going to play the game just because Kenosha Kenosha is in the state of Wisconsin, so is Milwaukee. And then um, the Orlando Magic agreed to it. And then slowly but surely, the WNBA did a few MLB. A few MLB um, games weren't played, and then that happened with the next day. And there were a few people who were mad at the athletes for only doing um, like forty-eight hours and not really committing to it. But I'm kind of on the athlete side. Like it's not, it's not on the athletes to fight for social justice. But like, the it's thing still that their, it's still their job. They still have jobs to do. Would you would you willingly go on a boycott? I mean, like I, willingly, like just like, like let's just say an injustice happens. You're just like, okay, we're not going to work, and I'm cool, and we're not working for three to five months, like half a year. I'm just not working. With That's my profession, boycott. there's a very more than likelihood that that will happen at least once in my career. So, but okay, but let's take it. You know what? No, let's take it because I did cover. Um, I did cover a strike that happened in your profession, and that only took two to three. It only took three weeks. So would you be would you be willing to commit to that for a month, two months? Like it's unfair for the athletes to be put in that situation, especially athletes who haven't been around. Um, around the, I don't want to call it the environment, just, like, around humans. They've been in a bubble with all they see is each other, and they, like, watch the news. So, of course, they're going to react in a type of way that isn't necessarily uh, what they wanted. Well, for me, when I look at their protests, for one, nobody, nothing, like, full change was never going to happen from, like, an NBA protest. No one's going to be like, snap, basketball stopped. Why don't we stop shooting black people? Like See, that wasn't going but, to happen. Okay, but here's here's what did happen. But um, but no, that's my point. My point is the thing that I think they got in exchange was they got their owners to say that they would let the arenas be used for voting polls. Yeah, and that's kind of uh, crazy that that wasn't already in uh, in practice just because. Um, just because, like, that was crazy. It's not already in practice. Just because uh, arenas are uh, funded by the state. They're funded by um, people. Not people. They're funded by, uh, yeah, they're funded by taxpayers. Yeah. Like, the owners don't pay for that. Yeah. It's uh, it's the people, the citizens whose tax money goes towards that. Yep. So, it's just like, wow, that really wasn't already necessary. So, that's like... I don't want to call it the bare minimum, but that's just like, uh, here's a bare breadcrumb. But what I'm what 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 I'm really looking forward to is uh moving forward and what the owners are going to do next. Just because a lot of owners, um, their political beliefs do not align with their um their political beliefs do not align with their uh athletes. So that's going to be interesting to watch as well. 
Well, I think it's a matter of, for the owners, what are you going to do? Right. Like, even if your political beliefs don't align with your athletes, the athletes are the product. Right. Like, if they say, you know what, we're not going to do anything if you're supporting uh, Trump, as an owner, you can be like, I'm not going to pay you. And they're like, you're not going to get paid either. That's the end of it. Right, right. And it's and it's another thing when... Because um, Kyrie Irving, who is basically a savant, because he called this out. He said, yo, we shouldn't... When the bubble first started, he was like, yo, we probably shouldn't be playing. Um, the nation is too volatile right now. We need to watch these things. And he even suggested them starting their own league. So I'm very interested in seeing what's going to happen moving forward. Yeah, definitely going to be interesting. Um, and more political news. Well, that that wasn't really political. This is political, though. But I'll take it. Uh, so as a person, I don't play this game, but you play this game heavily. You're playing this right before we started, and actually, wow, we were recording. So, Joe Biden launches a digital campaign, launches digital campaign yard signs for Animal Crossing. So mm-hmm. how about that? I mean, this isn't something new in Animal Crossing. Right. Like a couple of when it first launched, there were uh, Hong Kong protest signs in the game that uh, mm. honestly that got it banned in China. Um, but this was just like it's something that almost everybody does. Right. Like there's so many promotional events. I think the thing that I found the most funny was a couple of weeks ago, Phil Spencer, head of Xbox was interviewed in an Animal Crossing talk show and he had on an Xbox shirt on his character. Mm. So they bought him... I mean, I'm sure he already had a Switch. But they bought him... They got him a Switch and an Xbox shirt and he went on to a talk show to address issues on Xbox. And he's not even the first like person to do this. So this is like extremely common. For Animal Crossing, just especially considering how big it is. So, um, I'll say, uh, we'll just tell you right now how you can get the um, Joe Biden uh, Kamala Yard sign in your uh, front yard in Animal Crossing. So, to get the yard signs on your island, you can scan the QR codes on the Nintendo Switch online app or find them in the Biden online campaign store. According to Christian Tom, Director of Digital Partnerships for the Biden campaign, it's an effort to find new creative and innovative ways to meet voters where they are and bring our supporters together. Animal Crossing is a dynamic, diverse, and powerful platform that brings communities together. Now, this is more on the dust off the cartridge tip, but what video games do you think we would see political... That we would see politicians in other than Animal Crossing. Like, as a playable character, what game um, do you think you would see them in? As a playable character, Barack Obama was in Shaq Fu, I think. Okay. But that game wasn't good. Uh, generally, video games try their best to avoid politics. See, I feel like you're not answering my question. I... I asked you a hypothetical situation, not what the video game industry does. But, like, I'm trying to think of what video game it would be, and outside of, like, a presidential cameo or something, I don't think they would show up. So, uh, I think um, Trump, Pence, Kamal Harris, Biden, they would all be in Grand Theft Auto. I mean, In some type of way. Uh, Grand Theft Auto, I could see... Uh, Joe Biden in some capacity and Madden as like a guest commentator. Uh, I could see Trump as um the good guy in a Call of Duty game. No, I could actually. Well, I wouldn't say that. Oh yes, I would. I could see him being on the Russian side of Call of Duty. They did as that a last double, time. They did. I played it as a double agent who's working. <laughs> Who's a double agent working for the United States? Nah, he's but just his loyalty for is to Russia, so he's a double agent. I mean, so like in the last game, they rebranded a an so, American war crime. Uh, Russian. Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty. That's two. Let's think of three more. Let's get a solid five. So, Call of Duty, 
Maybe a Far Cry Gr- after Grand- they go back to America. Grand Theft Auto. Um, you know, I actually could see them in like. Uh, Watch Dogs. Watch, Watch Dogs. Dogs. Uh, Street Fighter. As a actually not Street Fighter. Um, Mortal Kombat as a DLC. Uh, can't as a November third exclusive or whatever. It would be the uh, so we have Far Cry, Grand Theft Auto, Mortal Kombat, Call of Duty. We need one more. Hmm. I could actually see them in the um, Arkham Knight series. Maybe. Just does. Well, DC does have, I don't know, do you remember Prez? Yes. DC has that. So, but we're talking about video games. Does DC have a Prez video game? I want a Prez no, video game. but they don't have it. So, But, like, Prez is part of the Batman video games. So, um... So yeah, no. So we have four. We need one more. Um, I actually can see them in, you know, those ads on when you're like watching videos on Facebook or YouTube, and they're like, "Be your own boss, <laughs> rule I the mean, world." Yeah. I can see them in that. But uh, next up. Uh, so yeah, we are, we're not going to touch too much on this, but the president of the United States has basically advocated for domestic terrorism. So, (laughs) so yeah, um, so if you guys don't know, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, the loser who is set, who's a 17 year old loser. He, his mother, who's also loser, drove across state lines from Illinois to Kenosha, he had an AR-15, which is illegal for any minor to be carrying a to be carrying a weapon. He shot at he shot at three people. One person died. I, be, I believe one person died. Um, but yeah, no, it did and then Trump was like, "Oh, he was trying to get away." Uh, but I'm not gonna say too much. But uh, I don't think he was wrong, basically. So. Um, so yeah, but that's just like where we're at in America. So how do I mean, you that's how we've been like for like a while. See, but I feel like it was more subtle, and now it's just like boom in your face, boom in your face, <laughs> and it's just like people have just like stopped caring about racism, and they're just like, you know what? To hell with it. We here. <laughs> We don't even have to wear our hoods anymore. Just wear our red hat, go to um, go to the riots, and start it off. And that's a lot. Like I don't like making this comparison, but that's how also how uh, Nazi Germany was in the uh, in the early days of World War Two. Not even World War Two, and just like the Nazi uh, leadership when they went to predominantly. Uh, Jewish areas and they started riots and were clashing with people and it's like oh these uh these Jewish people weren't uh they don't know how to act we gotta put them in line and that's kind of like what we're seeing now and how people are more uh people are more concerned about damage to property than damage to people I mean they don't they see us as another form of property so of course they're more concerned about their own yeah no for sure Anyway, uh, Big Sean said something dumb, didn't he? All right, so um, if you guys don't know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, the coronavirus. Actually, can you type in the lyrics for "Harder Than My Demons"? Ooh, the Nuggets are blowing this game. That's crazy. Lyrics, lyrics, lyrics. How the Nuggets be? Oh wow! Wow! Only up by one. They were up by fourteen. Dang. Okay. Uh, so, uh, where is it at? Let me see here. Now who is this? Baby girl want to dance on a groove? Nope, that's not it. Uh, 
Okay, here it is. I got enough. Ooh, I'm not reading all that. <laughs> I'm the idols I looked up to in my past. All natural. Dr. Sebi, you're going to have to CBD me. I've been watching what they feed me. Whoa, whoa. I like when she tell me with her body language that she need me. Yeah. See, my third eye is on left eye. I can't let them easy Hold eat on. me. Pause right there. Pause right there. Black people, stop talking about third eyes. You don't know what it is. Stop. So, what is the third eye? Third eye is seeing... The third eye is not just, like, you seeing, like, oh, bad stuff is going on. It's, like, you seeing everything. You're seeing the whole. It's not, like, you're, th like, when black people talk about third eye, they're, like, I got my third eye open. I see what they're not trying to show me. And I'm, like, no. That's just what's plainly in front of you. It's not hard to see that. Third eye is, like, spiritual and feelings. And, see, I feel like that's what he's trying to say. No. He's saying his third eye is open. It's not. Like you're trying to discredit him, but he's saying he's saying the same thing as you. You're like, oh, don't talk about your third eye being open. He's saying, yo, my feelings are up, my chakras are unlocked, they're unblocked. I'm one with the universe. And so he continues, this is it. He says, See, my third eye is on left eye. I can't let them easy e me. No, sir, sir. I don't even do flu shots. Alright. <laughs> so let's just let's cut this out right here. You cannot. His third eye is open. Oh, you please. cannot be in a pandemic when you're literally inside because of a virus and say, you know what? Flu shots? Nope. Not going to get them. I'm going to just thug it out inside some more. When literally the reason why we are inside is because people didn't take the necessary precautions to protect themselves. Like when we're in, we're literally in, let's see, March, April, May, June, July, August. We're literally in six, seven. We're in seven months of a pandemic. And people are still arguing about wearing masks. People are still arguing about washing their hands. And it's like, yo, you shouldn't be out here disproving, proving science. And when when you do something like, and when you have a voice that's as powerful as Big Sean's, it's like, yo, you got to relax because... Um, words have meaning, words have feeling, and as a person like Big Sean, who's in touch with the earth, who's in touch with the universe, he has to know that every action has a reaction. So when you say, nah, I don't even do flu shots, that's saying, yo, I don't care about you or your feelings or you and my body. As long as I'm good, that's all that matters. I mean, yeah. Do you expect something good to come out of Big Sean's mouth? You know, uh, it's pretty funny. He used to be one of my uh, favorite rappers, but I feel like as I've grown, his music hasn't grown with me. Like the last song, what was his last single? I'm single again. Sing yes. That might have had a point, but like it was clumsy. Mm. Mad clumsy. Okay. All right. Big Sean out here being big bad at whatever he's doing. Right, uh, and just lastly, uh, we're still in a pandemic. Uh, there's even still traces of the 1918 flu that is still with us today. And it's just going to show how, um, it just goes to show how history repeats itself and how when people don't take heed to what they need to do, um, it doesn't just hurt them as an individual or their family. It hurts society as a whole, and we can't, like, we're very limited in the capacity of what we can do as the United States um, this year, just because, like, when we see, like, Wuhan, and they're throwing, like, pool parties, and they're celebrating, and we see, uh, what was it, New Zealand, and they are back to, uh, like, zero, but they took the virus serious. When we, and we've never taken the virus serious, even from the start, it's always been, Yo, uh, we'll just get through this. We'll be here Memorial Day. It'll be gone by 4th of July. It's just going to miraculously disappear. And that's just not how the world works. It doesn't work like that. And so um, it's just like, yo, like we need to be more, I don't want to say more cautious, but we just need to be more careful in what we do and how we interact with people in the environment. This isn't ending anytime soon. Get used to it. Yes, uh, is uh, well, 
I actually uh, I had a dream that we were um, in 2021 and Joe Biden was in office and he finally got the virus under control and we were out partying and we were watching baseball in stadiums again. We were actually watching sports in stadiums again. We were seeing, uh, I don't know about seeing college sports, but <laughs> but we were, the world was back to back to some type of normalcy. Look at these black people dreaming again. Hey man, you know, uh, I forgot who said it, but um, an English writer said, hope is a lie. All you have is now. So what I have is hope. Which could be a lie. But what I do have is now. And that is what I, just me myself, am working on with the now. How are you working on your now? Like, what are you doing to, like, improve yourself? Dang, Denver really losing. That's crazy. I don't know. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I'm Metro Meta. Waiting for everything to just, you know, time out, you know, take a knee. Have to you, the end of the world? Have you uh, done? Have you done or tried anything to expand your skill set? Just like I got in, a new job, Marcus. Any, That's uh, my skill set. In, right in, in any aspect of your life, but like I got a new job. Okay. I've been working on that. Kind of busy with that. Okay, so you haven't. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Uh, one of the things I have been doing is just trying to be. Trying to find a balance between uh, being creative and being logical and finding that uh, centerpiece and forcing myself to be more com- be more uncomfortable when it comes to just like social media and uh, editing just because I've been doing I've literally been doing editing my whole life. And so it's just like it's like second nature to me. But now it's just like pushing the boundaries and doing more um just doing more stuff that that's going to I don't want to know I don't know if it's going to make me better but I know it's just doing stuff more that challenges me just as I don't want to call it a worker but just as a as a person who does like creative stuff and even even just like uh learning more about like digital marketing and stuff like that yeah I don't know Maybe I'll download some dating apps and just go crazy. Ugh, dating in a pandemic? That's wild. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's our show. Yeah, but uh, I just want to thank you all for uh, listening and tuning in. Once again, you can follow me on all social media platforms at Flow My Hero. Follow Morgan on all social media platforms at Metro Matter 26 Follow the brand on Twitter at 26 and G. Follow us on Instagram at 26 and Glencoe. Follow us on Facebook at 26 and Glencoe Media Network. Like us on YouTube at 26 and Glencoe Media Network. Make sure you are subscribed to us on our podcast. Um, Yeah, we really appreciate it. Uh, We want you to leave a five-star review. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Um, But yeah, you have anything else to uh, add? Uh, you know what? Uh, hit up our YouTube, subscribe, and uh, watch our videos. Leave a like, leave a comment. We want to hear what you guys gotta say about what we're saying. Yes, and until next time, peace, peace. All right, everybody. Uh, y'all know who it is, Metro Meta, and at One Marcus Flowers. And uh, we'd like to thank you for watching and listening to our content. Uh, we'd like to thank you even more if you, you know. Leave a like, a comment, subscribe, definitely subscribe. We need that subscribe, subscription, subscription, subscription. <laughs> hey, don't forget to share with all your friends and uh, tell us how you feel. And tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that you got it from 26 and Co Media Network. Keep it real.